I've never been so happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those joining on Facebook, I'm afraid we couldn't get these two beautiful faces, Sean and Susan, on um, Facebook. So you're gonna—we're doing audio. We'll get it sorted for next time. Um, and I'm so happy that we're on Instagram. So um, thanks for everybody who's joining. It's gorgeous to see you, and especially to Sean and Susan. Thank you so much. I know you're so busy and bless Susan's come in, um, especially for this, she's come into the hospital. So thank you so, so much. Um, I think it's a good opportunity as well just to thank all of your NHS staff for all the work that you're doing at the moment. Um, you're just incredible. So thank you from everybody. Um, so should we get cracking? Because we're a little bit late and I do apologize. Um, I want to just start by saying that um, Susan and Sean work Sean for East Surrey for Hospital, East Surrey Hospital. Um, so they will be speaking um, so be about speaking the policies about and the policies protocols that are in place there. If you are joining, you are joining um, um, as I know a lot of you are, who are planning to have to give birth in a different hospital, a different hospital please be aware of please that. Aware of um, that. Um, I will try and make the questions quite general, so hopefully Sean and Susan can help some of you, but just to be aware. So I'm Miriam, for those that don't know me, I'm a hypnotist birthing practitioner and um, a mindfulness coach for mums. Sean and Susan, do you want to introduce yourselves and just tell us what your roles are? Hi, my name's Sean Dudgeon. I'm one of the maternity um, matrons at East Surrey Hospital. Um, and I look after the interpartum part of the hospital. So that's the birth centre, labour ward um, and the home birth team. And hi, my name is Susan Meadows, and I'm for the birth centre, so I... And also one of the continuity teams. So together, we should be able to answer everyone's questions, and we're pleased to be able to be here, and hopefully mm -hmm. we can reassure everyone and answer some of your questions. Amazing. So, so I think there's a bad echo going on. I'm just going to... I'm going to mute on... Facebook, I think, and deal with Facebook. I think I'm going to have to do that another time. Um, I think the echo's gone. Okay, great. So um, we have been inundated with questions. I am so thrilled with how this, is, this has been received. Um, I have tried to gather all of them up, and I hope that we can get through them tonight. I know your time is very precious. Um, so let's see how we go. So, shall we start off, um, Sean and Susan? Can you just tell us how COVID nineteen has affected your department? What what's going on there, um, and what steps are being taken to minimise the impact of COVID? Okay, so our, probably the main effects that we've um, had that are impacting women are around visiting. Um, so we've had to reduce the footfall through the hospital. Um, there's no visiting at all um, in the hospital um, other than um, on the children's ward, just one parent. And then in maternity, we just have partners that are allowed to come in during birth um, and labour. And that's just one partner. Um, the other impact, a well yeah, a well partner. So mm -hmm. one that's showing any signs or symptoms of COVID-19. Um, the other biggest impact is around our community around care. Our community care. Um, so that is around um, the changes to the antenatal and postnatal pathways. So reducing face-to-face -face contact um, as appropriate and where it's safe to do so. Um, obviously, um, partners aren't allowed to come in at the moment for scans either, although we do recommend that partners come in um, and be outside in the car park in case there's any information that needs to be shared with them in a, in a sort of timely way. Um, and the, probably one of the other big impacts is having to, uh, suspension of the home birth service temporarily, obviously during this national crisis. Okay, so, they're, so... Yeah, they're just some of, some of the things that have, you know, affected probably the biggest things in, in a change in the service and the way that we provide our service yeah which which i think a, a lot of the people that have asked these questions have been aware of this information and now 
they want to get a bit deeper into to how it might work for them. So mm -hmm. um, can we just talk about birth partners? Had lots of questions about birth partners. If a woman goes into birth naturally and then comes into the hospital, does a birth partner have to stay away from the hospital until she is assessed, i.e. stay in the car park? Um, how does that work until she's assessed and then you say, yes, she's in established labour, you can come you can come in. How does that work? No, so where, where somebody thinks they're in labour and they're admitted to um, either the birth centre or, or labour ward via our triage area on, on that area. So if they, if they think they're in labour and they're contracting regularly, then the partner can come bring them in and come with them. Okay. Um, if they have to go home, they have to go home. But, you know, where, whereas if somebody comes in and they're not sure whether their waters have gone and they're seen on the antenatal day unit, then they would come in on their own. But we would always okay. recommend that they have someone bring them in. If they're not able to drive, obviously they need someone to bring them in and stay and wait. Yeah, okay, great. And so then after birth, what is the situation with birth partners? Lots of people are very worried about it, understandably. Quite a few women who have given birth previously when birth partners weren't allowed at night time. I think you had that a while ago, um, a couple of years ago. Um, if in the evenings, are you, um, do you have more staff there to support women um, or can birth partners stay through the night? How's that working Post in the postnatal so, ward? Um, birth partners are allowed to the birth and then once the baby is born, they can spend that hour, hour or two hours with their partner and the new baby and then if the mom is being transferred to the postnatal ward and um, then we, at that point we are asking partners to go home and that's not only to it's to protect all the mums and babies that we have in the postnatal ward as best we can so there, there isn't any visiting at all on the postnatal ward but they would still have that protected time after baby's born while the midwife is doing all the paperwork and all the usual stuff that we need to do okay and if so there's the no rush to get birth partner out. No, they can stay for one to two hours. Yeah, okay. that's what we're aiming okay. for at the moment. And obviously everything that we're saying is, is based on the guidance that we have to date. But the government are constantly updating their information and changing. And we're being very responsive um, here to change our policy too. So at the moment, that's the way we're running. And um, that's the best that we can offer at the moment. And if it changes, obviously we'll be posting that up and letting people know. But if a mum is having a cesarean birth, they can come in with the mum as well, birth partners, as long as they're well and they're not showing any symptoms. And then when the mum is being recovered, those partners are allowed to go to the postnatal ward, only those partners of women who are having a planned cesarean birth or a cesarean birth, because then they can have that hour or hour or two to meet their baby and spend the time the same as if they were if for women who who didn't have a cesarean birth i hope that makes sense yeah that does make sense just had a lady ask um are siblings allowed to come with the dad in those no, last two hours it's just no, one no. person it's, it's really just, it's just no. one person it's really strict yeah and um therefore no private midwives independent midwives um doulas um, it's just not, a birth no, one person not. just one just person because we're yeah. really trying to minimize that foot flow and that footfall and um, because obviously we're trying to protect not only the women and the babies but we're trying to protect you from us and then trying to protect the women from other people's partners and it's just mm -hmm. such a crazy world that we're living in at the moment that we have had to really clamp down on the visiting so we're sorry if that's causing people anxiety and we do we do understand that mm. and um if you have um a cesarean and you have to have general anesthesia anesthesia do you can can a birth partner stay longer how does that work will they go with the baby is that slightly different yeah so um as you may or may not know, if somebody has a general anaesthetic, then the partner's not allowed to stay in theatre anyway. That was the, the case before um, the coronavirus came. So um, the, the, the difference is they go into a main recovery um, after they've had the general anaesthetic until they're awake enough. Um, and then they would come back onto the delivery suite. So the dad can stay in the delivery suite room with the baby. Mum come back. She would be recovered 
on labour ward initially so he would have that couple of hours with her while she's in because they need more observations and much you know closer observations so he'd be able to mm. remain with her and the baby and then she would be moved to Burstow and then he'd he'd leave from there but he would have that additional time so the women that have an elective cesarean section that are recovered on the ward they're the only women where the partner can go for up to two hours and you know settle the mum into the ward because they won't have had any of that time um, okay. So generally, it's slightly different, but they would still have that time together. They have that time, and then a birth partner won't be admitted back into hospital until the mother is discharged. Is that That's correct? correct. Right. So yeah. I'm afraid. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And are women being tested for the virus or not? Um, where women come in symptomatic and they're unwell, so we've had um, women that have come in um, with COVID-19 symptoms and they've needed admission. Yes, they're tested the same as anybody else, okay. um, but not, uh, not routinely yeah, unless they're so, symptomatic. Some women develop symptoms during the time of their labour or during the time that they're here, and those women, women would also be tested and treated as suspected COVID. Okay. And isolated. I can see that there's a lot of, of um, a lot of questions are just going like this and I, I'm, I'm really sorry if I don't get to them but I will record them down and make sure we can do this again. Um, lots of people are asking about support for the birth partners for the dads. Yeah. Um, I assume that if them calling in to the ward or is there anything that, that that's being offered to them if a mum is in for more than 24 hours or days even is it really up to her to keep in touch or um, what does that support look like? Um, so obviously that if, if dad's a concern or if mum's not well enough to have any contact with her um, herself, then obviously, yes, dads can ring up. We've got, in fact, we've got probably extra staff. So staff have been deployed from other areas of the hospital. So we've got quite a good um, admin type of uh, support now. So those staff members are able to you know gain information and obviously you've got to remember that we're very limited on what we can mm -hmm. information we can give on the phone due to confidentiality so um, we would encourage mum and dad to, to have that contact with one another everybody's treated on an individual basis so that if there are issues um, then obviously we would take that but we yeah we've got plenty of support in fact the midwives are probably and support staff are probably slightly less busy without the visitors because they perhaps have more time to to get yeah. things moving and we are getting quite slick at getting obviously our we want to keep women and babies safe and make sure that they've established feeding but it, our goal is to have the minimum amount of time possible in in the hospital so we have actually got very slick on the ward at getting women discharged as soon as possible. And I would say that most of our women are well enough to be in contact with their partners. And so obviously they're welcome to FaceTime each other and contact each other as much as possible. I would say to the dads, you know, we do care about you and we do understand and, and sympathize and empathize at how difficult this is. Um, mm. And rather than sit at home worrying or thinking, oh, nobody's ringing me, we may not think to phone you. So just annoy us, <laughs> ring us if, if you're not getting if your if your partner's not answering her phone or you have any concerns please don't sit at home with that do get in touch ring the wards ring the triage number ring anyone and we will try to put you back in touch together as, as soon as we can mm -hmm. yeah it's so unusual isn't it but like you say things are, things can change daily you know yeah. we just don't know um okay so uh, a lot of people who are having a planned cesarean have found that their consultant meetings have been cancelled mm -hmm. um what should they be doing um in that circumstance will they assume that it will be rescheduled or should they just be talking to their community midwife how how what should they be doing so so ultimately nothing should have been cancelled so the, what's happened is is a change in the way that we're we're doing things so they what used to be um what used to be a face-to-face um, -face contact now might be a video contact. Um, so some of the appointments um, that can be made on the phone will be done on the phone by the consultant. So that will be currently okay. set up. So nobody should have anything cancelled. They should have some contact with either the midwife or the consultant. So if they're, if they're thinking about a booked elective cesarean section, then that will carry on. Um, we're doing cesarean sections electively seven days a week now due to theatre space. So we're trying to do two 
um, each day, two or three each day. Um, so that, yeah, that, that shouldn't change that system of them being notified as to when their cesarean is and people shouldn't be missing or have cancelled appointments. We may have streamlined scans and things, things like that, but they should still have contact with somebody. Okay. Um, talking of scans, <clears throat> um, birth partners are not permitted to come in. Is it all right to ask if the, um, the sex of the baby, if mother wants to find out, can be written down so that father can find out with mother? Is that Absolutely. something? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th that was another question that came up. Somebody was asked, had asked if they could video the scan or record the scan in some way. And yeah. I'm afraid that that's not permitted. Um, although it is a conversation that you could have with the, the, um, the sonographer at the time. But as far, the last um, information we had was that it wasn't something that could be um, allowed like, for some reason. But um, yeah, definitely. Are, yeah. 12 weeks, are the 12 week scans still going ahead? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 There's very few yeah. things so, that have been stopped or cancelled. I can see people are um, worrying about cancelled growth scans and things like that. The growth scans, yeah where deemed necessary will continue. Um, I think there has been incidents in the past where we've probably scanned people slightly more than maybe necessary. So, um, but the scans are done, you know, according to guidelines still. We may have just reduced the number that they're having. And when you say um, the 12 week scan, it, the range is 11 to 14 weeks. So it might not, don't, I don't want women to worry if it's not bang yeah. on that 14 weeks. It's, that first scan is now, no, we're referring to as a dating scan. And then the next scan would be the anomaly scan, which is 18 to 21 weeks. Yeah. Okay. Just a few, quite a few women had messaged about having their scan postponed. Um, and I think if anyone is concerned, should they just speak to their midwife about it? Because it's a case by case, isn't it, really? Um, yeah. So we've got, we've, got, we've got a community midwife contact and we've also got our COVID helpline, which is manned Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, by a midwife who's um, um, available. So there's a, a mobile phone number and that is available on the Sash Maternity Facebook and Instagram page. And that's been advertised. Um, so if women want to contact that number, if they've got any worries about, should I have a scan? Is it, am I missing out on something? Um, yeah, just just get them to ring the COVID helpline and they can get help there. That's, that's their community midwives and they will get back to them. Okay, that's amazing. Um, Susan, at the birth centre, yes. um, how soon after, well, this might be a general question really, but it's come in. So how soon after a woman gives birth in the birth centre is she moved to the postnatal ward? Well, it's, it's actually quite the same as um, delivery suite. There's no, no real difference. So it will be that one to two hours. Um, okay. But, you know, lots of women, if everything's gone smoothly, and especially if they've had a baby before, um, we, we are offering six hour discharges. So at the, women, at the, we're just swapping phones because Sean's phone is right now. Oh, have we lost Sean and Susan? Am I still here? Anybody comment? Because I can start a live again. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> Oh dear, you're stuck with my face. Okay, let's see if we can get Sean back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Susan. Go live with Susan. Sorry, everybody. Okay, here we go. Going live with Susan now. I hope this is Hi. helpful, everyone. Bye. Oh, hooray. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing Sorry to me? Okay. <laughs> like technical pitch. Oh, I can't hear you now. I can't hear you. Is your mic you on? Us? We're not speaking. I think so. Are you there? Hello? 
You're very, very faint. But everyone's got their thumbs okay. up. Can they hear you and I can't, maybe? Could be. Can everybody hear us? We, we can, can hear they them. They can hear us. Just we right. can hear them. Right, OK. OK, I'll try and listen to your answers. This is going so well. <laughs> OK, everybody, thanks for sticking with us. Um, where were we? So I think we were talking about the birth centre. Yeah. Uh, six hour discharge. Six hour discharge. And at the moment, we're still able to facilitate that um, on the unit in general. And um, so it might be that the woman is asked to wait in another area like triage or uh, to wait for a discharge. OK, great. Someone just asked, can you can you be discharged the same day if you've had an epidural? There you go. Yeah, the back. Didn't you hear okay. us? I didn't. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to plow on with uh, yeah. some more questions. Is that all right? Charge after a cesarean section, and I'm afraid no. You would need to stay in hospital a little bit longer um, for observations and just to uh, heal a bit before you um, to leave. Yeah. Okay. We're just moving across to the window. <laughs> Carry on. Oh, I love, I love the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi at the hospital. <laughs> we can't use the Wi-Fi, we're on our 4G, and that's why it's so rubbish, because the Wi-Fi blocks oh, everything. Oh, I can turn off my... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's on your 3G okay. with drains. And... Um, so the one other go... question, can partners stay... So should I just talk you through the induction process? Would that be helpful? Yes, I was going to come to it. I had that on my list. Yeah. So our current, currently what we're trying to do, again, to minimise hospital stay, is we're looking at, we're doing outpatient inductions for women that are fit that criteria. So if you're low risk, so if you're just gone over your due date um, by 12 days or more, then um, you'll be suitable for a um, home um, outpatient induction so that would be coming in and then having the um, dialer pan which are these small rods that are inserted into the cervix and then you're able to go home with those and you know labor as you hopefully going to labor naturally at home um, if you're not suitable for that then you will come in and um, be asked to come in and it's and unfortunately there is still no visiting on the antenatal ward so but once we know labor has started or you're suitable for your waters to be broken then you're partner will be called in to go into labour ward with you. Um, and a lot of people want to know what point is established labour and we would say it's different, it, it's at the point when you're transferred to delivery suite or you're transferred to the birthing unit in, in labour ready to, for the birth of your baby and it would be at that point that we would phone partners to come in to be to support you through that. Okay. Great. Forgive me if I, I can't quite hear you, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna ask you some a few more questions. Are you all right for time? Yes, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Our water. Okay, great. Um can I come to uh aftercare and breastfeeding? Mm -hmm. Um generally what is the situation on the postnatal ward? Um and is there a lactation consultant still available? Yeah. What's the support look like for um, women? Basically, uh, there's no contraindication to breastfeeding with the coronavirus situation um, and it's business as usual. The, the breastfeeding consultants are still working and all the support should be there while you're in hospital. Yeah, we've also got one of our um, um, infant feeding team who's isolating at home. So she's got a video link. Um, so she's doing video link advice for women as well. Um, kind of supporting what would have been bursto babies. Um, so, yeah, she's doing that. So that seems to be working well as as well. Sorry, how do they access that, um, Sean? So that would be information that would be given to them when they're leaving the postnatal ward. Um, they'd get that access um, to her. Okay. So, yeah, that's part of the information they're given when they're leaving. Um, I've, just seen a, I've just seen a message about tongue tie. That service has yeah. been... Um, suspended at the moment. Yeah. So I that would that... have to, they'd have to go, what would they do in that situation? I'm not sure anybody's doing that at the moment. I think that'd be contraindicated. Yeah. yeah, as a spread of the virus. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, somebody's um, asking if they can be have a six hour discharge after an epidural. 
And I would say um, that it might be a little bit longer if you've had an epidural because just your legs might be quite weak and you might be quite as mobile as we would like um, to send you home. Okay. And when it comes to going home, should, should they be self-isolating? Follow the same guidance as everybody else. So social distancing, no family visiting, um, just remain as their own household um, and, you know, limit the amount of journeys they make. So if they can get other people to bring shopping to them, that'd be great. Otherwise, um, you know, just limit the amount of time that they're leaving the house, same as everybody. Okay. So people okay. are asking how long can family meet the baby and the answer really isn't from our perspective it's more of the government guidance because households shouldn't be going to other households anyway so it's just to follow the national guidance for the same for everybody to do with that yeah it's a rem it's rem um, it's reminded of that picture so if you meet one person and that person has met x amount of people then suddenly you've transmitted it to a lot of people and they're coming out of a high risk area if you like so they must keep to the um government guidelines on on social isolation and distancing okay um gosh there's so many questions we could, i wish we could just answer them all i I'm, they, I, I know i just feel so i really feel for these women who obviously you know just just put all this in their head um please 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 pick up the phone and speak to your community midwife if i don't get to you tonight. yeah use, please use, please use know the, that you can do use that use the helpline use the helpline use sasha the email that's manned all the time as well um, um lots of people are asking about ppe and will the midwife be wearing ppe the whole time and the answer is yes um, the midwives, when they have face-to-face -face contact with all women, we are wearing a mask and a, um, gloves and a, a gown as well. Okay. Um, uh, on the breast uh, tongue tie, I know I'll, I'll get lots of questions about this. Is the reason that's been stopped because there isn't anyone to do it? Or is there a, a self health and safety issue? It's it's about a health and safety issue. Yeah, it's it's a transmission. Um, yeah, you know you're causing you're causing an open wound if you like. So it's just not safe at the moment. So that should have been suspended everywhere. And do you know if women are very worried about that, which I know there will be, is there tongue tie clinics or specialists that are offering any sort of support? Do you know, or is that something I could look into or? Um, well, our own infant feeding team, two of them are tongue-tied practitioners, so they will offer the support and guidance if women need it. So in the same way of, you know, talking about feeding and, um, yeah, so it's, it's, just, it's just not, you know, it's, not, it's, a, it's a way of spreading the virus, if you like, so it's just not going to be done yeah. at the moment. And it's okay. an unnecessary sort of bringing the baby into that environment, if you like, it's an unnecessary risk. Or it's deemed okay. a, a, I think there's going to be lots of questions about feeding, um, a lot of concerns. And I, and I will say that um, my plan is to keep doing these lives yeah. weekly. Yeah. Um, and we will get, I think we will do a specific on breastfeeding support, feeding support. Yeah, um, I can ask our infant feeding um, specialist. specialist to be part of the next one. We've also had um, an working <laughs> it'll be much better <laughs> but i will say to women you know we are open for business although we're all going to look a bit different um don't be too focused on a particular room or a particular birth it's about having the right birth for you on the day and any room can be turned into your sanctuary and turned into your space and we did post a little while ago under the bump to birth logo a bit about what to bring in fairy lights and um all of that and we can definitely facilitate everything it's just we're all going to look a little bit weird in our in our ppe but um it shouldn't stop you from us or you from trying to have a positive birth experience that's what we're all about really yeah absolutely and and um i know that infinity space 
did uh, uh, have a brilliant live called Bloom, and they had um, an infant feeding specialist. I think it was Kat, was it Kat calls and I think she was on. Mm -hmm. So go and check out the recording as well, because there'll be advice there. Um, if there are subjects or there's, there's specific areas that you want me to cover, please message me, and I will see if we can get somebody on who specialises in that area to do exactly this, to do Q&A. I think having you guys is so amazing, but there's so many questions for a midwife. We can almost kind of hone it down and yeah. get into different categories, really. Um, I'll just say something um, about COVID-positive women and um, suspected COVID-positive. Um, so COVID-positive women who are in labour need to be cared for on the delivery suite there is no other way of um there's no way else that's safe to care for these women but obviously they are all of our labor rooms are separate so um there's you know there's those women aren't in a in a general ward if you like if women are covid positive and they're symptomatic then they go to um, a covid positive ward in in the general hospital so but on lane ward obviously we have specific specific rooms for COVID positive mums and babies. We have a side room. Is the for aftercare once you're home and the midwife and, and commun is that different? Um, so yeah. that is slightly different. We're not doing the initial um, so first day visit. That is a telephone appointment. Um, then we will see mums at home on day five for the heel prick test and weighing in a hospital based clinic. Um, and we are looking at, um, so that's Crawley. Um, we've got children's outpatients now that we're using at East Surrey. Um, although we are looking to use one of the old GP surgeries so that women don't have to come back to the hospital. Um, okay. And also we've got Horsham Hospital. So they are doing clinics uh, as far out of the hospital as possible. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so it's it's not dissimilar. And then they're seen, obviously, for uh, day 10 when they're discharged. If they need any enhanced visiting, if there are any other reasons, and obviously, again, it's individual care, um, and we can consider, you know, seeing them. But it's certainly there'll be enhanced telephone calls and that kind of thing. Okay, okay. the support's there. The support's there. It's just different. It's going to be different. And just to go back to the question about the virtual breastfeeding support, that can be uh, accessed via the sash.burstobabies um, email address. So I think if you email sash.burstobabies at nhs.net, then you can request some breastfeeding support virtually. Great. Um, so I've taken up nearly an hour of your time, my love. Um, I don't know how to thank you. Um, I will go over all of the, all of these amazing questions and comments. I'll gather them all together. Um, I'd love to do this again if you yeah. have if you have the, the capacity to do so. Um, I hope it's been helpful um, to those that have come on. We've had it went up to nearly two hundred just on Instagram. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Um, we're going to keep doing these a lot. I'm doing some free birth prep preparation it's 15 minutes um twice a week um at 7 30 on a tuesday or a thursday if we're not doing one of these um so if you're pregnant if you're a birth partner please log on and let's do some breathing together let's talk about how to create that environment that susan was talking about um and and how to think get thinking positively especially around this time when i know a lot of you are feeling very anxious and unsettled um all of the hypnobirthing courses are still going on. They're working beautifully. So please, please DM me if you want to know any more about the courses. Um, and Sean and Susan, thank you so, 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 so much. Yeah. You do this because you're passionate and because you care about women we and do. babies. And, and we'll, be, um, we'll be here to look after you. So you'll see us, even if we're under our mask, we'll all be smiling yes, underneath. Just, so can't control yeah. it. We have to just somehow... You'll see it in it the go. wrinkly eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the worn out wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, do use the COVID helpline. Use Sasha um, and Miriam and I and Susan will arrange this again. I might do it from home next time. I think the technology at home is better than the one in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, we'll rehearse having, it. We're, we're rehearse good at it. delivering babies. We're just no good at techie stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Um, 
brilliant. Thank you so, so much. I love Thank and leave you. you. Goodbye to everybody else. Bye and bye. Um, hopefully see you again very, very soon. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.